as a refresher. When using SwiftUI, you describe your user interface declaratively and leave the rendering to the framework. Each of the views you declare for your UI, like text labels, images, or shapes, adheres to the view protocol. View requires each view struct to feature a property called body. Anytime you change your data model, SwiftUI asks each of your views for their current body, because they might change according to your latest changes. It then builds the view hierarchy to render on screen. In a sense, SwiftUI makes snapshots triggered by changes in the data model. Since SwiftUI can identify all views in your view hierarchy, it's not difficult for it to animate any changes to your views. If, in the current snapshot of your views, a given view is 100 pixels to the right, it's a piece of cake for SwiftUI to animate that change. It works the same way if your view is larger than it used to be, or if it's now purple where it used to be pink. SwiftUI keeps track of the state in the previous snapshot, and if you need it to, it can animate any changes you declare for your views. Let's try some animations in Xcode and see how it works in practice. Open the starter project provided for this episode. There's a fine green circle on the right, which isn't animated in any way, yet. See this green color? Let's extract it into a state property. To do that, double-click on this ellipsis to expand animation data. I've used this to supply you with an array of colors and offsets. Let's start off by storing the first of these. and using that state. Marking properties as state will trigger a new snapshot of your view each time they're modified. To update your user interface, you don't adjust your views directly. Instead, you modify state properties. That triggers a new render of your UI automatically for you. This should be review for you at this point. Now, each time you modify color, SwiftUI will create a new snapshot of the circle with its new foreground tint. To see that in action, we'll cycle through the animation data array. And we'll start that process off when the view appears. Use a for loop and enumerate the animation data array. Except we won't need the first one, because that's what our state starts out as. To perform some work that will happen over time, we're going to need to use a dispatch queue. Don't worry if you're not familiar with those yet, there's only one associated with UI, and that's the main one. To do something after a certain point in time has just occurred, you can use its async after method. We'll start at now, and add some seconds corresponding with the array index. At that point, set the animation data property accordingly. And now, hit the Live Preview button. Every second, your color is changing. And that's sort of an animation, but there's no value interpolation happening. The colors just change instantaneously. To smooth things out, add the animation modifier. This will let SwiftUI know that you want your changes animated, but not how. We'll explore the other options in the next episode, but for now, just go with the default. Live preview now, and you'll see that this default applies some kind of timing curve, crossfading between colors. In addition to color, an animation data instance also comes with an offset. And being a CG size, that's designed to be used directly with the view's offset modifier. Let's just pad the circle so it doesn't hit the edges and send your circle on a trip around the screen. With that, our first SwiftUI animation is complete. As you see here, it's really simple to combine the animation of multiple properties. Next, let's explore the animation structure, which is behind the magic.